back this Sunday. A special socially distanced type service, but we're back. So if you're coming back this week or if we're gonna wait a few more Sundays and we'll see you down the road, either way, it's good to come together again to church. And I couldn't just stay right there. I, I, I couldn't keep it light or superficial. I then asked myself why. Well, I mean, besides the fact that I work here, I have some actual enthusiasm for being back. But what is it? What is it that I'm wanting to get back to so much, the most? Our social group? Worship. But I can worship anywhere. So is it our collective worship rituals? Is that okay? I, now I'm having to give myself a check in the spirit. I have to pause consider my motives. Why do I want to walk through those doors this Sunday? What's the most important thing to me? The prophet Amos in Amos chapter 4 had some strong words for the uh, privileged of the northern kingdom of Israel. They were sarcastic words. In Amos 4 he calls them names and I'm just going to say they're the real housewives of Samaria and their husbands they had access to all the historical holy sites uh, of the north, Bethel, Gilgal. So he uses some sarcastic tone to give them a priestly invite to worship. It's right here in uh, four, uh, verses 4 and 5. Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal, multiply your transgressions. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Proclaim and announce the free will offerings for this you love. You children of Israel, says the Lord God. I think you can hear the sarcastic tone even without me. Um, bring your sacrifices every morning. This particular location was known for its peace offerings, which you bring once, maybe twice a year, every morning. Sarcastic exaggeration. Your tithes every three days. He's talking about the tithe that would be from the crops that would be once every three years, but he says every three days exaggerated sarcasm. Why? For this you love. Getting to do the rituals. That became their passion. Took all of their time and energy. So much so that they forgot something. And the one thing that God has against them that actually causes them to be prophesied against and they're going to be drugged into captivity. It's in verse 1. He says, uh, you oppress the poor. You crush the needy on your way to church. What I like about my Bible is that um, it also, when there's bad behavior, it actually cross-references me to some good behavior to counter it. So it cross-references me to Matthew 5, Beatitudes of Christ, which uh, pastor's been doing a great job and he shared those uh, on Sunday mornings in the fall and he's gone even deeper, of course, with digging deeper moments on Wednesday nights. Check them out. But uh, three in particular jumped out into me when it cross-referenced me over to the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the humble. Can I come this week to church without a need of my own superseding being there with you just to be with him together? Blessed are those who mourn. In this case, it means blessed are those who mourn over sin, not just my own sin. Can I ask God to use our collective worship time to break my heart enough to pray for our country? For the former police officer who is just now realizing what he's done too late, to the ones that were sinned against and keep being sinned against, for the ones that feel the need to act out, out of some kind of hurt. Is my heart going to be breaking for the sin of our land? And is that gonna cause me to make that my priority and my focus here? One more. Blessed are the peacemakers. When I exit this church building this week, or my service online, when I get to the end of it, will I come out recharged, refreshed, a better peacemaker in my community, online, Lord, help us this week 
What is our priority walking in and out of those doors? May you be given all the praise and the glory and may you heal our land. This has been your Daily Dose.